Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to TD Fins Talk, ladies and gentlemen, on this beautiful, beautiful um, night, I guess I'll put it like that. Um, um, I had a great day today, guys. Um, I just wanted to stop through tonight and have a chat with you all about what happened today at camp. We never actually got a chance to go over today's camp um, because earlier stream got out of hand in the best way possible. I must admit, stream from earlier, man, we spent 30 minutes talking about Minka and then it just went. And that's the type of fun I love having on these streams, being able to debate, being able to argue points, listening to other people's point of views. What an amazing stream, man. I got to give it up to everybody who called in earlier on that stream. I forgot everybody that called in. Um, but even Dougie Durong stopped by. He called in. We had a good um, debate. It was just amazing, man. That's what you live for, just moments like that of talking Dolphin football and getting passionate about it and just loving every bit of it. Shout out November Ray. I see you the first one in the room. Everybody coming in the room right now, make sure you hit that like button on your way in. It's only three of y'all here and soon it'll be 20 and 30 and 40 and it'll keep going, but I can see who's here that didn't hit the like button. So y'all hit that like button and show your love and support, guys. Um, I'm not headed to bed, and I know y'all see me with my dolphin pillow. It just feels good, so I'm holding on to it tonight uh, while we do this stream. Um, but yeah, man, I just, once again, last time, big ups to that live stream earlier today. If you haven't checked it out, you got to go check it out. I ruffled a lot of feathers, obviously, but a lot of people also agree. People have been hitting me up in email, Instagram, told, TD, I totally agree with you on the Mika situation. But I don't disagree with I don't agree with you on the Drake Bellage or TD. I believe with you believe in you. Um, I believe you I basically um, agree with you on the Drake and Bellage. But no, nah, Mika need to be on the field at all times. Just a lot of people. Hey, that's what it's about, man. You hear different point of views and it's just a beautiful thing, man. What's up, TD? I'm out here in California. Shout out all the way from Cali. So that means it is six, almost six thirty where you are. No. It's almost 5.30 where you are, man. We over here on the East Coast getting ready to settle down, relax for the night, and lay it down. And you over there living that 5.30 life. Everybody just getting off of work, man. Shout out to y'all out there um, on the West Coast right now, man, especially if you tune in to TD Fans Talk. Um, Big Boy Sports News said late. Nah, you ain't late. You here, man. You're only a few minutes behind. Uh, Washington State, only 5.30. Ha-ha. <laughs> hey, that's what it's about, y'all. But... But shout out to everybody that's here right now, man. Um, right now we got six in the room, but like I said, it's going to keep on piling up and building up. We got eight in the room now, and um, hopefully everybody's getting their notifications now. Um, they weren't for quite some time, but now people are saying, oh, I finally, I'm finally getting my notifications. Yay. So I'm glad to see that that's happening. Late stream for the training camp news. Yeah, it is because we got carried away earlier. I kept saying, you know, I want to do this on the next stream. I want to do this on the next stream. But we just kept going and we got carried away. Things got passionate, heated in a good way. You got to check out that stream earlier. Some people are like, oh, it's so long to check out. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. You'll love every single bit of it. What up, Carnell Williams? I'm good, man. What's up with you, homie? Um, how you doing? I'm great, man. I'm great. Just talking this dolphin talk. I just got I actually just got off of um Josh Ferris's Wednesday night show uh, where he um, has his own show on Facebook. So I was over there hanging out and I called in, gave a little insight on what I think about a few things. And now I say, hey, um, the wife just walked in. She said, don't worry, I got the babies. Go have fun. And I'm like, oh, you ain't got to tell me twice. So I came right back here and hit that live button, y'all. Um, I'm, I'm good. Check it out, man. We didn't talk um, in a mean, a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, we need to, man. You just let me know what's up, man. Said, by the way, thanks for checking out my stream yesterday. Absolutely, man. Whenever I got time, I'm usually a busy guy, but when I got time, I'll definitely um, check you out, man. Um, by the way, oh, I'm bummed. I missed the stream earlier. I was at work. I'll check it out later. I ain't got crazy November eh? I must admit, man. Anybody here that was on that stream earlier, let us know in the comment section. Let us know if you was on that stream earlier, man. Um, I will. I've been watching all your videos, though. Cool, cool, man. Uh, what's Shake Money talking about? Um, I didn't get notification. I got you by chance. Wow. Follow me, Twitter. Once send you a link. 
Um, I got you. If you know, um, I'm at TD Fans Talk on Twitter. I ain't an expert at social media. Just hit me up on there, Shake Money. I'll hit the accept button, and um, then we'll be connected. You can send me whatever you need to send me, bro. Um, what did you do, TD? <laughs> I didn't do nothing, man. I was just speaking my mind. I was speaking my opinions, and things went crazy, man. You know, half of the chat section, they agreed wholeheartedly. The other half. Um, didn't agree, and people calling in and say, what's wrong with these fans, TD? They don't see the big picture. And I had people calling in, bro, you just way off, and this and that, that and this. It got crazy early. But it was fun. It was fun, man. I'm telling y'all, even Doug, I told y'all, Doug and Duron came through the room, and when he called in, we had our little debate, too. It was so much fun, man. It's what it's about, man. Um, the room looked lit. Oh, I, I got the lights off right now. I got the lights off right now. I'm probably going to be streaming tonight for about an hour and a half. We're going to go until about 10 p.m. on the Eastern Standard Time. Just giving y'all a heads up. So we still got another hour and a half to go. I'm going to be live right here, right now, for about an hour and a half at 10 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and retire for the night. And me and the wife are going to watch a movie while we enjoy our chicken salads and um, digress from our day. So, Y'all got me for an hour and a half. Whatever y'all want to talk about, we could talk about. I'm still going to go over this camp stuff from today because that's what I wasn't able to do, which sucked. Trust me, I was going live earlier about it, but the stream earlier went over two hours because we just couldn't stop debating. It got crazy, and I loved it. Anyway, y'all make sure y'all check that out. Nobody on here was um, on the stream earlier. Um, um, We got on, TD. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Wetson was in the stream earlier. Um. Bunch of Rosen lovers on my channel. <laughs> hey, big boy, if you're not a Rosen lovers, tell them how you feel. At the end of the day, it's your channel, man. You give them your content. That's what it's about. If they want, if they want to find content that they agree with, they'll go somewhere else. But that's what it's about. You talk your stuff on your channel. You talk what you believe. Don't let nobody change that. Unless they got a compelling argument, you keep your mind open and say, you know what, that makes sense. Let me change my stance. But you stick with yours and you give the reasons why, man. Um, I love the debate with Doug. Respect and classy. Yes, that's the homie, man. Doug is the guy, man. I love working with Doug. He keeps it 100. He don't never, ain't no disrespect from Doug. None of that stuff, man. And that's what it's all about, man. I work with Doug any day, anytime. I can't wait for the Eagles game because we don't already plan that if we both can get down there, we're going to do a collab the night before. I'm not going to put him on the spot and say we're going to do it. We just got to make sure that Lock it in first that we're both going to be there, which we plan on being, but we don't want to say in stone yet. Um, but if he is, then that Saturday night, like we're going to do for the Ravens game, we're going to find somewhere, a, a, a spot to just bring all of our subscribers to that's down south or that's going to be at the game. And we're going to have a big party in that building and we're going to have a live we're going to have a live collaboration streaming for all y'all who are not going to be able to make it to that Eagles game. We will be live streaming on that Saturday night together with a whole bunch of people from our channel and his channel and one uh, bar, sports grill place, wherever we decide. That's going to be so lit, man. And I'm going to try to do something like that for the Ravens game, too. Um, I got in connection last night with a huge Ravens fan. He has his own channel, too. He has a big following. He has about 17 to 18,000 subscribers. Um, and the Ravens, man, they, they fan base shows up, man. He does his thing. So I'm going to propose that to him as well. That Saturday night when we all meet together in Miami before the Ravens game, see if he wants to come out and do a live collaboration he talks about the Ravens. I talk about the Dolphins, why I think we're going to destroy them. He telling me the opposite. And, but he's a humble guy. He's a great guy. I forgot what his name is. Um, Pete knows. Pete knows for sure. He's the one who got us in um in connection. TD, um, is he? Oh, you got it. Engraven. You're right. Um, TD, yeah, that's his name. Engraven. Y'all go check him out. He a classy guy, man. Even though he a Ravens fan and I despise them, he is a real classy guy. And I definitely want to. Not that, oh, yeah, I'll work with them. No, I want to work with them because that's the type of person you want to work with. They keep it classy. And that's what I love about Doug, too, man. Um, Those guys know how to keep it classy. You know, I try my best, but sometimes I just got to go a little bit over the edge. You know, God ain't done working um, with me yet. So y'all already know what I'm saying. But anyway, 26 people in the room and only nine likes. Y'all show you love. Hit that button, guys. Um, What happened to um, M. Fitzpatrick? You didn't check out the video? 
for all y'all who didn't see the video, whenever I was talking about Fitzpatrick is upset, um, that segment is in like the first 30 minutes. Just go check it out, man. Um, just go check it out. All right. Um, yo, I'm down, bro. If I'm invited to do the stream. Absolutely, man. If you down south, man, we're going to do something together. All of us going to be together. All of us going to be together. Oh, and I want, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put it on the spot and put them on blast, man. This was funny to me, man. So I made that video about Mika earlier. You know, when people disagree with you, they want to be nasty and try to come at you wrong. Um, so this is what um, somebody wrote. Now, I pinned this message at the top because I don't run from anything and I love it. It was funny to me. This is what the person wrote on the um, comment section about the Mika video earlier and the one that went two hours long because we got heated and it was going crazy. So this is how they feel about TD. This content is awful. You, you, but he meant the right put. You put two videos of crap out a day because you're itching for some news. It's er, it's early. Let these guys earn their place, and and he'll play. Don't worry, TD. And I responded. Yeah, I know. I I give some of the nicest, some of the nicest clapbacks, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on, I, I put the nicest clapbacks, man. I said, "Why are you watching awful content? Why are uh, why are you watching two videos of crap a day? What's wrong with you? Why would you do this to yourself? I want to help you out. Above this video is a bright red button that says subscribe. In one easy step, you can click it and immediately." It will say unsubscribe, just like magic. Have you ever done magic? If not, hit that button and you'll instantly become a magician. I'm so proud of you. Your magic now, excuse me, um, your magic now will relieve you from hearing awful content and two videos of crap per day. You should be proud of yourself. You did a great thing today for yourself. You respected yourself by clicking that button. I'm so proud of you, but the real secret is that you shouldn't revisit that button. Never click it again or you'd be involved in a term called insanity. Don't keep putting yourself through this crap. Stay strong. Fins up, brother. That, and, I, and that's the type of message I want to send him because people, I don't understand people. If you don't like something, that's the beautiful thing about YouTube. I don't like this guy. He puts out crap. I don't like what he does. I'm not following him. It's that simple. People don't realize if I see that I got 4,500 subscribers and tomorrow it says 4,499, I feel good. Because people that don't subscribe to your channel means they're not in line with what you believe, nor do they like what you're doing. And nothing's wrong with that. But you don't have to come at people and try to tell them and try to down them about what they're doing. You don't have to do that. And that, that's unnecessary. You don't have to try to down people at all. That's just trying to be a bully. That's all you're doing is trying to be a bully. TD, the audio is out of sync. Is it just me? Jazz, I've been trying to figure this out for several days now. Um... It's it's beyond me, and I'm trying to. I don't. I, I have no idea now. I'm at the point where I'm confused. I don't know if I just need to buy a new mic. I have no idea. I wasn't having this problem last week, and all of a sudden, about three days ago, almost everything has been doing this, and it's like aggravating the heck out of me. So I don't know, man. I might just restart every single system that I got. Um, your mic, good, bro. I know, but I have no idea what the echo. I don't, maybe it's the fact that I have a DSLR camera connected. Um, that's what I'm filming on. I'm not filming on the laptop camera. Um, I'm filming on, filming on a DSLR camera, a really good camera. I don't know if the system is registering it a different way, but YouTube made some changes recently to the system that ever since that happened and ever since I talked to them about my um, notifications and stuff, it's just been a delay and it sucks, man. Who wants to watch? be watching videos where it looks like your mouth isn't in sync so you're not getting the real reaction with the words? It sucks. And, it, and it's not even a big delay. It's like a half a second, but it makes a difference. And it sucks, man. Um, so I'm going to keep playing with it. Y'all bear with me until I figure this crap out. Hopefully I figure it out. 
um, because the video is like half a second behind what I'm actually saying, and y'all probably hearing it right away. So I'm not sure. Y'all be all bear with me. Please bear with me. I'm sorry about that, guys. 38 in the room, 19 likes. Show your love. Hit that button, guys. Um, um, TD, you good with um, the Compton car always because Dolphins. <laughs> Um, I have no problem with the audio. Okay. I don't know, but I do. I even rewatch it. Now that's what gets me. Some of them, people say something's wrong with the audio. I watch it and I don't see an issue, but some of them, I actually do see an issue. So I don't know if it's just a system thing and a playback thing with YouTube. Um, what were you not happy about with today's camp? Nothing was fluid. And we'll dive right in. Thanks for saying that because you gave me a um, segue into what we're here for, okay? Nothing was fluid. Nothing that I saw so far was like, okay, yeah, and it's building, and it's building, and that their person showing consistency. It's almost like a few new people are showing something, and a few of the good ones that were showing something had a little, you know, I had a little step back in some cases. And that, oh, man, I don't like that. We got to at some point get consistency somewhere. Defensive stuff, there was some really good things on defense, but let's go ahead and talk about it, man. Are you taking calls, buddy? I will be in a little bit manual. We got about an hour and 20 minutes left on this stream. I'm going to try to get through some of these tweets about today as soon as possible so I could take some calls and see what some of you all have to say, all right? Um, last few comments, I agree with you 100%. Um, don't like, don't watch. There's tons of channels you watch. I sort of like the delays. It's like I'm watching an 80s Chinese movie. I guess. Uh, hopefully that ain't offensive. Um, TD, you was in the last stream long. It um, looked like you were mad. Oh, I wasn't mad. I was passionate. And TD just, um, I talk louder than most people, by the way. Uh, when I was in college, I was in a marching band and I was in a drum line um, for four years. So, I have, I've always been around drums, just playing all around me. A marching band, by the way, at the HBCU, Historical Black College and Youth University, Bethune Cookman University, and um, a lot of that hit me hard because I talk louder naturally because my decibels of hearing is a little lower. I hear perfectly fine, but um, basically, since I hear at a slightly lower level. I don't need a hearing aid or anything like that, but I hear at a slightly lower um, level. It causes me to naturally talk louder because I don't really hear myself as loud talking. So that's why I always seem like I'm going, but maybe even when I'm loud, I'm a little more, but I'm really not thinking that I'm as loud. So y'all just always keep that in mind. If it looks like I'm really going in, just think that I'm a little bit less than that um, because it's just natural for me. All right. And how can I be a mod? Email me um, before we get started. That's a great question, guys. TD Fins Talk is um, going into a whole new realm, guys. We're going into a whole new realm of possibilities. And shout out to Chad Marshall, one of the first mods I've seen in here tonight. Um, we're going into a whole new realm. I'm actually opening the door now um, to new mods on the channel. Last night, I actually deleted over 20 mods. I deleted over 20 mods from the channel. We had about 44. I think we're down to 24, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I deleted a lot of mods because I only kept the mods who are actually active on this channel, um, who are always, you know, adding value. Doesn't mean you have to be there every day and this and that, that and this. No, that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about adding value to the channel, helping with the chat section. I see that you're actually responding to other people's comments on the videos after they're posted. That's the type of stuff. Mods are for people who want to help the channel elevate and be a part of something bigger um, than themselves. That's what being a mod is about. Not just getting to read all the crazy stuff that we hide in the chat. My, I look at mods totally different. And I think every guy that I kept as a mod uh, really embodies this channel. They love this channel. And, my, and some of my mods totally disagree with a lot of the things I say. It's not even about that. It's not about your point of views of the Miami Dolphins. It's about you're enjoying the content and what we're doing over here in general, and you've grown accustomed to and connected to this community. You, you've grown accustomed. Some of y'all right now that I'm seeing y'all name, y'all are always here with us. Y'all are always chatting with us. And you can help this channel if you want by becoming a mod. So if you'd like to become a mod, 
Um, all you need to do is go to TD, go to your email, go to tdfinstalk.com. I oh, don't know. I just screwed that all the way up. tdfinstalk at yahoo.com. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, tdfinstalk at yahoo.com. Email me and say, hey, can I be a mod? I last night I was up to 4 30 in the morning. Please don't tell my wife. I keep on saying that. But um, I was up to 4 30 in the morning. That's why I got a rough start this morning. And um, because I was actually um, I don't know if y'all know who R. Keith is. He's an artist. Um, he's a huge Miami Dolphin fan. He's a um singer, um, writer, all of that. Um, and we're doing a collab, we're doing a Miami Dolphin song. He already sent me the hook and everything. It's been nice. Last night, I went ahead in about 30 minutes, finished out the first verse. Tonight, I might work on the second verse um, if I can sneak um, past my wife. Um, but I'll work on the second verse. But I was up all last night. Then I was researching the Mika articles. Then I was um, basically, I created a mod, mod application. So email me and I will reply with the mod application. There's some important questions I want to ask you to determine if you'll be a good mod for this channel. But one thing, let me go ahead and save some of you all the time. A lot of people that are asking me that are 14, 15, and 16, and 17, you have to be 18 or above because the content that you are privy to as a mod is vulgar, um, disrespectful, hateful, and there's a lot of things that aren't cool. Um, that comes through the chat section. And that's natural. You always got haters in your life. Um, and uh, my social responsibility is to make sure I'm not exposing that to, to anyone who has an adult that's responsible for them at this time. Now, if you're a grown person, um, you, hey, you have every right to decide whether you want to be a mod or not. Um, so I can't do that. I can't sit there and have minors as a mod on the channel because that is disrespectful to your parents. Um for me to even invite you and allow you to be a part of something that's going to expose you to stuff that they may not want you exposed to. They may want you exposed to, but I just can't. All right. Um, so just, just want to be clear with that. I don't want anyone that's young to get offended and say, oh, that's, that's, that's not right or anything like that. It's, it's a respect thing. I don't know your parents, but even though I don't know them, I'm going to show some respect because I would Definitely want to know if my children are being involved in something that ex that's exposing them to things that they don't need to see at this age. And I'm not here to debate whether you should see it or not. That's up to your parents because they're your guardians until you're 18. That's just my thoughts. All right. Um, but if you want to be a mod, just email me because I'm actually going to be taking about 25 more mods. We're going to get to the point to where we're running. One percent of the channel will be mods. 5,000 people are less than 50 subscribers away. And when we hit 5,000, I want 50 mods. And don't think mod is just being a mod. The mods over on our channel, it's going to be a stepping process where you'll have an opportunity to kind of grow through the ranks because some mods are preview to things that a lot of people aren't preview to on this channel. The development, the growth of this channel, the plans that we have coming up, the bigger and better things that we have coming up. So when you become a mod, we'll actually give you something that you can do to help out this channel on a consistent basis. So it's not just being a mod. So some of y'all are like, oh, I want to be a mod. Hopefully after I said that right now, some of you might be like, never mind. And that's cool. Um, I just want to give y'all that caveat now. Um, versus just thinking that it's like, oh, okay, um, I'm just going to be a mod or whatever. But anyway, that's what it is, guys. But let's dive right in, baby. We got some um, camp news today. Um, just want to talk about some of the things first that Brian Flores said earlier, guys. What's up, G-Firm? I see you. Um, uh, first and foremost, um, he was talking a lot about the edge rushers, one in particular, Charles Harris. He said, I think he's really working hard on the edge, working on technique. Um, he pointed out that the edge guys will be a fluid group. Um, this is going, he basically said, this is going to be a fluid spot depending on situations and best grouping. Um, a lot of guys playing that position. So he's mixing and matching it over there. Um, so he's, now he's been stressing that all camp before, um, before things even started. He's been stressing that all camp before things even started, man. Basically saying, hey, it's all about setting the edge. That's all I care about, who can set the edge. If you can't set the edge in a 3-4 scheme um, with the nickel package and things like that, boy, you are in trouble. You are in trouble, all right? Well, what Carnell talking about, TD, what do you think about Saints signing Michael Thomas for $100 million, 70 guaranteed? And, guys, tonight, I don't mind y'all throwing stuff in there, and I'm going to be answering through these tweets, even hitting y'all up, because this is about y'all, even though I'm going to still get through these tweets. 
Um, what do I think about it? I just think that these teams be losing their mind, man. I think that these teams don't like, and, and you know, some people always say TDG, yeah, like he know everything. No, I don't act like I know everything. I just have a theory about certain things and I and it's a conviction of mine. So I believe in it. And just because a professional or general manager that's done, done it for years, if I disagree with something they do, don't make them right and it don't make me right. But my convictions and my ideal way to build a football team, I always look at the money, money man. Like Kay saying right now, Kay said he earned that money. I'm sure he did. Then let a team that's willing to pay it, pay it. Obviously, the Saints are willing to pay it. They're willing to pay it. Y'all got to understand, what, Drew Brees getting somewhere around $25 million? Now you got a receiver at $20 million? $45 million for two players. Two players are taking up 25% of your entire cap space. Two players are taking up 25% of their, their cap space. I'm not a fan of it. Carnell, I am not a fan of it at all. Great talent. He deserves his money. And, 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 and what kills me is when I give the facts like that, people still abuse me just because I got an opinion. Let me say that one more time. Great player. So y'all don't think I'm hating. He deserves the money. Once again, so y'all don't think I'm hating. But a smart franchise would have never did it. In my opinion, you don't do it, man. You don't do it. Teams need, oh, uh, people don't, I mean, you don't do it. You don't do it. Now you got two players, 45 million, 25% of the cap for two players. And I keep on giving y'all the example of this. Two players at 45 million. What if your left tackle is that good and you want to pay him 20 million? You know what I mean? What if your running back is that good and you want to pay him 15 million a year? Another 35 million, four players, 70 million? What if your safety is that good and you want to give him Rashad Jones money, almost 20 million? You know? What if, what if you got a DB that's that good and you want to give him Xavier Howard money? 15 million. That's another 30, 105 million for six players? See, people think that just because the player's good on the team and they earn the money, you got to pay them. When are, y'all, when are, when are people going to start to realize you can't pay everybody? Because what if you drafted well, you got the best coaches of all times, and they develop 10 Pro Bowl players on the roster, and they all want that money? Some of y'all are like, pay them. Well, those 10 players about to take up $200 million. Now you're over the cap. Not only are you over the cap, you still got to pay 40, 40 people on the roster. That's not likely. Y'all get my point here. I'm trying to make a point. You can't pay everybody, and you gotta do your the rest of your roster some some um some justice. It's not good. It's not good for the Saints. It's just not good for the Saints. I mean, I keep on giving y'all the example with Russell Wilson. I proved that to y'all the other day. I brought facts to the table. Everybody kept telling me, not everybody, y'all know what I mean. The few people that come over here trying to dog me all the time, tried to tell me, no, you got to pay Russell Wilson. And the facts are right in front of you with him. The man was on a rookie contract getting minimal dollars. The first three seasons as a, as a um, Seahawk, he made less than a million dollars a year. So all y'all haters who ready just sitting there with your paper and pen, I'm a fine with the check the fact check TD on the day. All right, let's see if you can break through this wall. Russell Wilson made less than $1 million for all three of his first seasons in the NFL, which allowed the team to have great weapons all around him. He didn't make more than $3 million in three years combined. So they can afford all they want around him. And when you're a good talent, that's good. That was smart, Seattle. He won 11 games his rookie season. His second season, the team was still successful, even better, won 13 games. 
Then the next season, they won 12 games. Didn't don't you see that beauty and having a quarterback on minimal dollars because you can put weapons all around them, um, uh, uh, A1 defense, and everything looks pretty. And they didn't even let Russell Wilson play his fourth year out. They restructure his deal after the third year. And immediately after restructuring his deal, getting a $31 million signing bonus, his money goes way up. They won 10 games. And that season and the next three after that, those four seasons after he got his new deal, they never won more than 10 days, barely getting into the playoffs. And he is a skillful quarterback, so he is good enough to take you to the playoffs but not make any good runs after that. You're good enough to go to the first round like Lamar Jackson, like your boy in Houston. I keep forgetting his name, him and Lamar Jackson. I either forget one or the other every time I'm talking about him. They blind you. Watson, yeah, Deshaun Watson. I don't know why I forget both of their names. And now it's even worse. Now he goes from whatever he was making in, 19 million or something like that, to 35? And the very next day after they say, we just gave Russell Wilson 35 per, they had to get rid of their all pro um, defensive player, Clark or whatever. I forgot what his name was. Y'all know better than me. Who was the player that went over to the Chiefs or something? That they said that they let go or sent off. The very next day, all pro player, by the way, the season before that, Frank Clark, yes. Because you can't afford it. You can't afford it. And people argue my logic with that when the proof is all around the league. I can name 10 quarterbacks right now who were amazing their first three seasons, and as soon as they got their new deal, the team was never the same. I can name 10, and I done done it a million times on this part, um, on this um, channel. You see how um, Trollinati said QB is more important? Why are they more important if it ain't transferring into Super Bowls? I just said I can name 10 quarterbacks that are quote-unquote more important who as soon as they got off their rookie deal after showing that they earned that money, the team was never the same. Can I interest you in this, Cam Newton? Tell me I'm wrong. Can I interest you in this, Joe Flacco? Tell me I'm wrong. Can I interest you in this, RG3? Tell me I'm wrong. Can I interest you in this, what's his name, um, Kaepernick? Tell me I'm wrong. Can I interest you in Russell Wilson, the example I just gave you, tell me I was wrong. And I'm talking about not the player. They're all good players when they had all the weapons around them, by the way. But their, their team success all took a nosedive. That ain't it. That's not it. And, and let me tell you, the only quarterback that sur survived that entire era, the only quarterback that survived that entire era was Andrew Luck. And I was lucky because he had an injury that they said while he's out this whole year and that year would have proved they, they weren't going to be successful, let's go give him an O-line. And they invested everything they could for the next two years while he was hurt in an O-line, and they did it the right way, luckily because he got injured. Cam Newton, they don't even know if he, he he's the future anymore in Carolina. Y'all remember when he's Superman or something? When he all on TV in the interviews, I don't remember the last time I saw Cam Newton on TV. Wasn't he the next it? Wasn't he? Man, quarterbacks more important. Y'all following what the media been telling y'all for the longest. Oh, it's all about the quarterback. As the quarterback goes, the team goes. That is the biggest lie ever. That is a lie, y'all. Stop believing it. Just because lazy analysts tell you on ESPN and that's all they talk about, and don't get me wrong, it ain't, it ain't a lot of y'all fault. When everything in the sports world puts the most emphasis on the quarterback, I get it. If 90% if of the people in the world believe that it's the quarterback, I get it. You're going to naturally believe that that's the most important position. I get it. I understand, but you've been bamboozled. You've been bamboozled to go with the masses and the entire masses are ignorant to this, uh, this situation. 
And some people may be like, well, who are you to call people ignorant? Because at some point, you start to build, you got to look at history. You start to build the facts. And where, when, I, when I say you're ignorant to it, is when people ignore the facts. I just named you five quarterbacks. I can keep going if I really think deeper into it. But I just named five quarterbacks. Tell me one of them I ain't, I, I ain't 100% on. Taking 18 to the playoffs, looking explosive. They done knew this. They done knew that. Everybody said they going to be this and they going to be that. All of them quarterback I name, quarterbacks I named, they put a title of they are the future in front of them. They put, they said that it's the future, they the future. And Monte Tyson said it's the O-line. It ain't just the O-line. It's the quarterback salary. Because you start getting paid that kind of money, you can't afford an O-line. But if you can afford an O-line, oh, you're really in trouble now because now your defense up. Now you're putting up 30 points a game, but you're giving up 33. Let me say that again. Now you're putting up 30 points a game, but you're giving up 33. Because you can't afford no defense. And you wonder why Jerry Jones over there scratching his head right now. Oh, this is a headache. I don't want to pay Zeke or no big money, man. I don't want to be this these idiot franchises that get stuck for the next five years with these players that one wrong thing that goes wrong, and we screw. Zeke is the offense, to be honest. Watch this, y'all. Zeke the offense, Wetson? Was McFadden not the offense? A few years ago, when he was running 12, 1,300 yards, was McFadden not the offense? What was the other running back before him? Tell me he wasn't the offense either. Gosh, what was the other running back they had right before McFadden? Gosh. Man, I hate when I had these brain farts. Murray, DeMarco Murray, was he not the offense? Putting up 13, 1400 yards? And Jerry Jones said, and the whole Cowboy, I told y'all this earlier, whole Cowboy fan base, we need to sign him. Why would Jerry let him go? And Jerry said, shut up. A Mack truck can run through these these holes, these offensive line, line, line putting up. So I get that the offensive line, in this case for the running backs, you don't pay these running backs this big money. You can send King and Drake to Dallas and he's going to look as good as Ezekiel Elliott. And that ain't a knock on neither of them because both of them great talents. I seen how Dallas struggled without Zeke when he was suspended. Oh, go do your research, Wetson. Two of the offensive linemen were hurt. Until two games after that, when the offense alignment came back, oh, and then they were hitting the road. They were hitting the road. And trust me, I know I lived in Dallas. I just moved to um, I just moved back to Florida in March. I just moved back to Florida in March. I just moved from Dallas. My wife is a cowboy fan. Hurting my marriage, by the way, but she a cowboy fan. I had to deal with those cowboy fans all the time up in the barbershop. Oh, that ain't the answer. When Ezekiel was out, that ain't the answer. Then Zeke come back in the old line and come back. Oh, that is that time. It's Zeke in that time. Delusional, man. Delusional fans. It wasn't just his suspension. When Ezekiel came back from that suspension, they still went like one and three. And then them two offensive linemen came back. Man, they hit the road. Man, the, the freaking Redskins were leading the division by three games with eight games into the season. Eight games into the season, the Redskins were leading the division by three games. We in week nine, and the Redskins, like, we got a three-game lead over the Eagles and the, um, and the Cowboys. We finna win this division, hands down. And that same week, the Redskins quarterback was out for the season. The offensive lineman for the um, Cowboys had came back, and they hit their stride. The, the, the Redskins couldn't buy a win, and then next thing you know, the Eagles and the Cowboys end up in the playoffs. It's crazy, man. TD um, was playing horrible, um, to be honest. What do you mean, TD? Let me know what you meant. Aaron Rodgers. What about him, G-Firm? Let me know. Dak. Um, 
What LOL? So Randy Moss is not special, Chad. Um, that was wetting the bed. That's why. Yeah, he was. He was playing real bad. When he didn't have Zeke, they were playing bad. When Zeke came back, they were playing bad. But Dak actually came right back to form when the offensive lineman came back, though. He came back to form. This game is a huge game, y'all. It ain't just worrying about your team and hoping we put a good product on the field. How is it going to match up with the rest of the league? That's why the Patriots are so far ahead of everybody. They sitting back like, I mean, every year we show people the formula, but they just keep on chasing, chasing false facts. They keep on chasing hopefuls. They think that this mobile quarterback is the new, the new era of the NFL. Can they please tell me when the last time a mobile quarterback offered his rookie deal won something? Can they please tell me the last time a mobile quarterback off of his rookie deal won something in the NFL? Can y'all please tell me when the last time a mobile quarterback, you know what I mean by mobile. I ain't talking about the Big Ben mobile. I'm talking about the mobile, the the um freaking Mahomes mobile, all those guys. Don't say Russell Wilson. I just told you the stats with Russell Wilson. I just told you what happened with Russell Wilson. Maybe you came in late. You need to go check out the beginning of the stream or about 10 minutes ago. I just told you the whole outline about Russell Wilson. Ain't nobody on this channel should be giving me Russell Wilson as an example. Like everything I didn't say about his situation ain't 150 billion percent a fact. Come on, y'all. Vic won the Super Bowl? Hold on. Hold on. Cause y'all got me, y'all, y'all messing with my head right now. Cause I don't remember Mike Vick ever winning the Super Bowl. Hold on. If Mike Vick won a Super Bowl, I know I'm tripping. I know I'm tripping. I don't never remember this man winning no Super Bowl. Four-time Pro Bowl, NFL comeback player of the year, Art Bill. Man, ain't win no Super Bowl. I know what I was talking about. I said, tell me the last time a mobile quarterback off his rookie deal won it all. Because ain't that the ultimate goal, y'all? I mean, what do we really be talking about here? Everything that I have a conversation about is to get us to the ultimate goal. Not to have us winning games and going to the playoffs every year and losing. Like I said before, tell me the last mobile quarterback that was offered a rookie deal that won a Super Bowl. And y'all said Steve Warren Young, TD, he has a he was a legend, though. Even take the legend part away. How long ago was that? And it was in a different NFL era, but we ain't going to talk about that. But how long ago was that? So what reason does, does all of these teams in the NFL right now, what reason do they have to be chasing that same model? Look at how long ago it was when Steve Young did it. So what reason... Does the NFL, the the, friend, the organizations in today's NFL, what reason do they have to chase it? That same model. And it's never been done since then, since like forever. And that's why you don't draft the mobile quarterback. I disagree. I'm not saying you don't draft the mobile quarterback. I'm one on the record that said this. Patrick Mahomes. Dak Prescott, um, I don't put Lamar Jackson in it. Um, Deshaun Watson, those three guys, those three guys have a chance to win it all. But here's what I told everybody. I said, you have to win it. When they're on their rookie deal, you have to win it when you're on their rookie deal. And even then you got to hope for some luck. And let me talk to, talk to you about that. 
The reason why you need to rent it on their rookie deal is because they're getting minimal dollars and you should win it on their rookie deal if they're good enough because you're able to put a whole bunch of weapons around them, right? And then after you win it on their rookie deal, honestly, you want to try to at least get it twice on the rookie deal, but say one time. Then you have a little bit of leverage. I think that the Chiefs have the best situation because if Mahomes can come out and win a Super Bowl on his rookie deal right now, now when you sit Mahomes in the office and like, hey, it's time to restructure your deal, you have a young quarterback who might look at a Tom Brady and say to himself, and it's up to the franchise to breed one word into the organization on a regular basis. Dynasty, 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 dynasty. Just breed it. Start putting posters around the building. Build the dynasty. Just put it in their heads. Because if you can win with a rookie mobile quarterback and you win it all while they're on their rookie deal, when it's time for Mahomes to get his new deal, he might sit down in that office and say, hey, man, I'm going to help you all out because I think that we can keep this going and I want to win a dynasty. It ain't just about the money. I'll take $27 million. That's still overpaid to me. But at the same token, you got to you know, find a happy medium. Because trust me when I tell you, when his restructure comes and he keeps playing like this, oh, he getting every bit of $40 million a year. He getting every bit of $40 million a year. But when you win in a Super Bowl in your young age and you, you're young doing it, now you can start to believe, what if we can be a dynasty? But I know we can't be a dynasty because they're they going to sit you down and be like, man, we got a chance to be a dynasty. You earn $40 million a year. But if you want to keep this dynasty going, we want to see if you can work with us on this salary. He may do it. He may not. But you got a better chance because you won while he was on his rookie deal. Now, every player you bring in that office, the O-line, the D-line, the corners, send them down for the same conversation. Hey, man, you earn $12 million a year. But if we're going to keep this dynasty going, what do you think about nine? You saving little bucks everywhere, and players are more inclined to say, okay, because you're winning. And, you, and it's a dynasty, dynasty, because they know that they're going to make so much more money over time if they build a dynasty than them going for their money just to big lump sum right now. That's the only way you're going to get it done. The only way. And you still got to hope that players are reasonable with you. Outside of that, guys. The reason why people go in this route is because of Russell Wilson anyway, man. Because of Russell Wilson. He's been getting these big deals. He went to a Super Bowl, and he was the one who ushered in a new era of we need that mobile quarterback. It wasn't Mike Vick. Mike Vick was the first one to do it, but he was one of the only one at that time to do it. Other than the big body rushers like Aaron Rodgers and Ben, that's different than these speed little guy quarterback rushers that we got now. But Russell Wilson kind of made Russell Wilson competed against Tom Brady twice. That made organizations say, that's the model. That's the model. We finally got somebody to go up and challenge those guys. That's the model. And everybody wasn't thinking about the simple fact that he was doing that model on his rookie deal. Everybody can afford that model. Everybody can afford that model. The Ravens messed up with that model because Flacco's contract, while having Lamar Jackson that first year, ruined the whole year. You went, you didn't have low quarterback salary because you were still playing Flacco. Flacco, one year down the drain on that theory. Trust me, y'all. Don't fall. That's why I ain't no tank for two a guy. That's why I'm not a tank for two a guy. That's the very reason why I'm not. Give me a pocket passer. I want to go with what works. Give me a guy that look like Tom Brady in the pocket. He ain't got to be Tom Brady. But if you put nothing but weapons around him, trust me, you can have him looking close. You can have him looking close. Was Flacco not doing that? Shout out to Shane um, Lesperance. Appreciate the donation, man. Love you for that one. Everybody who donates to the channel, I appreciate you donating down below in Super Chat, guys. But yes, man, if Flacco can do it, if Eli Manning can do it, see, look at those guys. Eli Manning, pocket passer. 
Joe Flacco, pocket passer who can get out here and there, but he's a pocket passer. Flacco got one. Eli got two. Because what did they do? Put nothing but weapons around him. And that was a young Eli. That was a young Flacco. Still not making buku dollars in the league. Not like these guys today. These guys ruining their team, y'all. And that's why every time I see a new team doing stuff like this, I drew, yes. Another one bites the dust. Better for us. What do you think Tannehill, um, Tannehill is? I truly, deep down in my soul, believe that Tannehill was good enough. Was he elite? H-E double hockey stick? No. Was he boo-boo garbage trash like people make him out to be? H-E double hockey stick? No. But if you put an A1 defense with Tannehill and a great offensive line and a few weapons, trust me, y'all. We would have had Tannehill's fifth season consistently when he went like eight and two or eight and three to start the season before he got hurt. The year we went to the playoffs and he looked, that's the year where everybody was dying to have him back after the injury. Even his haters was like Tannehill coming back. It was shocking when I seen that. I was like, man, oh, so you never know what you're having until it's gone. Then he came back. They just went right back to dogging him, but things weren't the same. We cannot ever sit here. I don't care if Tannehill was boo-boo trash the entire time. We cannot sit here and say that this man has ever had a unit around him other than that fifth year. I believe it's the fifth year. He never had a unit around him that was, look at this defense, legit. Look at this offensive line. Man, we got, man, we give Tannehill. Has this man ever had a moment where he had four seconds to throw the ball? But then y'all want to rave about Patrick Mahomes, who has a solid six per possession. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Hey, where y'all going to dinner tonight? Oh, okay. Five Mississippi, six Mississippi. Y'all y'all want to give those type of quarterbacks all the merits in the world, and they in one of the best situations that you can dream of. Best situations you can dream of. Oh, how beautiful it would be to have a quarterback who had four plus seconds to throw the ball on a consistent basis. Out of the 20 quarterbacks that we we let go in the last 20 years, at least five of them would have would have been good. At least five. At least five of them. And I ain't talking Tannehill. At least five of those guys might have at least still been in the league as a backup or something. At least five of them, y'all. Had we had a great O-line. And when we thought we were getting a great O-line, you got Richie Cognito bullying people because of their sexual orientation. Screwing that up. We had too many scandals. I was pumped that year, too. Man, we got an O-line. And Incognito was a good lineman to me. I don't know about y'all, but he was actually a really good lineman to me, especially when he was with the Dolphins. But, man, I was like, oh, we got a line now. Oh, my God. You mean to tell me they bullying this kid and now they suspended and we got drama suspended indefinitely? You can't sit here and tell me when we had a great old line. Other than the year, Tunsil, Tunsil was here, Albert, um, Brandon Albert, Mike Pouncey. And some would argue that was only half the line. That was a decent line year. And wasn't that Tannehill's best year before he got hurt? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But that was my thoughts on Tannehill. That's my thoughts on him. But we so quick to judge everybody. Let me tell you something about a quarterback. And you don't have to take this to heart, but trust me, Dolphin fans. My, my family, my family Dolphin fans, trust me when I say this. I want you to take this to heart. When it comes to the quarterback position, many people would disagree with me on this, but trust, uh, please just listen to it. Even if you don't agree, just keep it in the back of your head and look around the league. When it comes to the quarterback position, whoever your guy is and if you believe in him, never blame him until he's in a great situation around him. Because this league has so many attributables that can make a quarterback look even worse. A bad run game will always have a quarterback in a bad situation having long distance. A bad O-line will always have a bad running game, a bad receiving game, and a bad quarterback game. 
Bad tight ends don't help your quarterback have a safety valve. Bad defense always puts your quarterbacks backed up in his own territory, just further fields. Trust me, you got to be patient. If Rosen was starting and he was going out there throwing picks and messing up, you got to build your team and fix everything around him and get to the point. This is this is what I'm trying to say. You got to build your team around your quarterback so good that you get to the point that we all can feel good about saying, here you go. This year, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. And then see how he does. But if you want to be honest with yourself, when has Tannehill ever had a year where we could have said you have no excuse? Never. And that ain't to discount his flaws and himself. That ain't to discount the things that he screwed up on. The wide open plays that if he would just take his, if he would just go to his fourth progression, he would have saw wide open. That is not to discount the things that he had a problem with himself. He wasn't perfect. He sure as hell wasn't perfect. But at the end of the day, it's so funny to me that in this NFL, truth be told, you ain't got to be perfect to win as the quarterback. You just got to have a good team around you. Take this to heart. Who's the best quarterback of all time? Take all biased out. I said Dan Marino, but I'll remove that real quick. Who does everybody say the best quarterback of all time is? Write it, write it down in the comment section while, my, while I answer my wife's call. Hey, babe. Oh, I didn't know. Let me come out. Y'all give me a second. Five seconds. My bad, guys. My bad. Um, but listen, what they're saying is the overall consensus at this part of NFL history is that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. And as a Dolphin fan, you really shouldn't like Tom Brady. I get it. But we can't discount. He's a, oh my gosh, he's a really top-notch player. He's he's at the top. Whoever, whatever top quarterback that you name other than Brady, it's not like you can't put him on Mount Rushmore with them. Let's put it like this if we were to remain neutral. If you want to say Dan Marino is the top of all time, if it was a top five Mount Rushmore, Dan Marino's up there, but Tom Brady is too. Nobody's Mount Rushmore wouldn't have Brady on it. That's the point I'm trying to make. So you got to show some respect to anybody that you think would be on the Mount Rushmore. And for Brady to come out of his own mouth and to say the words on camera on a late night show and people ignore it that like it meant nothing. And it's everything. He told you why he's so successful in his career. Bill Belichick even said it in an interview. Oh, he's not athletic as all, at all. He's a really good system guy. He does his job well and doesn't make mistakes. Brady, Belichick said that in an interview. And when Brady comes out in the interview and out of his own mouth, he says, the reason why I'm not the highest paid quarterback, because I like to win. Because I like to win. I enjoy the competitive advantage. I enjoy the competitive advantage of having better talent all around me. People act like they don't know what those exact words mean. I enjoy the competitive advantage. He used the word advantage of having better talent surround me. That's why I'm not the um, highest paid. And yeah, his wife makes money, so he has that luxury, but you can't ignore what he tells you, the reason why they're so successful. He saves the team money so they can put better weapons around him. And in return, it makes him look that much better because he keeps winning. Come on, man. Well, 
Brady didn't pl even play great last Super Bowl. Can't give him all the credit. Coaching staff, Flores gets credit too. Yes, Brady actually, the last few years, he actually has not had phenomenal Brady-like playoff performances. That's a fact. I mean, when he played the Eagles, oh, my God, that was lights out. Broke records and lost. But that was still amazing. But if you look at every playoff game, the, the, the AFC championship games, the divisional round games, Brady actually hasn't played his best football over the last few years. There's been great team effort, y'all. Amazing, amazing great team efforts. Amazing great team efforts, man. And why? How do you? How are you able to get amazing green um, team efforts? Because they have the competitive advantage of having great talents around him. That's the winning formula of the NFL. If your organization ain't headed down that path and trying to accomplish it that way, trust me, they're wrong. They're wrong. Everybody's been on this race the last few years to try to overcome that in a different way and have it has not been successful. Has not been successful, man. And the only way that teams have a, a competitive advantage is having a great quarterback on the rookie deal. Because you automatically have the luxury of having a competitive advantage because your rookie is on a rookie deal. So you can surround them with talent. Why you think it's so many young players, rookie mobile quarterbacks that's been in the playoffs? Name all the rookie court. Name all the quarterbacks right now in the NFL that are four years or less in the league that went to the playoffs this year. Y'all name them. I bet you get at least six or seven. Remember, it's only twelve teams make the playoffs. But I can guarantee you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. Stop running. You're gonna well actually on um, wild card too. But you're gonna make it to at least six or seven of them. That's a lot. That's a lot. Name all those young players, guys. Name them all. Dak Prescott, playoffs. Patrick Mahomes, playoffs. Got weapons around him. What's the kid with the Chargers, man? Went to the Super Bowl. I don't know why I always forget his name. Uh, Mahomes, Watson, Dak Prescott, golf, Trubisky. We already got Watson. Um, the Ravens guy, Jackson. That, that, that's, that's six right there, but it's more. No, Phillip Rivers is older. He just one of those top tier quarterbacks that be balling. But he still ain't getting this big money like everybody else. It's crazy. But do y'all see my point? Do y'all see my point, man? Over uh, almost half of the quarterbacks that went to the um that that went to the playoffs all had a competitive advantage on their team. Oh, oh, Nick Foles. You can't forget about Nick Foles. That's seven. He still falls in that category, don't he? When he played for the Eagles, Nick Foles. As far as his salary, from a, from a salary standpoint, seven players, and it's probably one more we just ain't thinking about. It's probably one more that we ain't thinking about. Whoever the quarterback they win in the war with ain't getting big bucks. They getting minimal dollars. It's probably one more that we ain't thinking about. But do y'all see my point? About half of the quarterbacks in this league that went to the playoffs last year were on their rookie deal. And their teams, the reason why they were successful is because they all had a competitive advantage. Why? Because their quarterback were getting minimal dollars. Minimal dollars so their team is loaded with talent. But watch. All we're about to do is sit back and watch the new era of players. Dak Prescott, when he get his new deal. Lamar Jackson, when he get his new deal. Deshaun Watson, when he get his new deal. Golf, when he get his new deal. All we finna do is sit back and watch history repeat itself. And as soon as all of them get their new deal, they're going to fall back again into mediocrity. Because they can no longer afford all that talent around them. And then the new era of guys going to come in, the tools of the world, the Haskins of the world, all of those guys, oh, look at them, I told you. And those teams are going to be a little bit better. And what proof do I have? 
the generation right before them, seven years before them, Cam Newton, RG3, Kaepernick, all of those guys. Same era. Tannehill was in the era. Same era. Same thing. We just keep repeating it, and everybody keep on being dumb, dumb to fool, following the same path, trying to figure it out that way when that way ain't never, ever been proven to work. It's never been proven to work. When are we going to get that? And I know I explain this a lot, but we keep on gaining a lot of new subscribers on this channel. We In the last week, we got another 200 and to over 200 subscribers on the channel. And that's why in the chat section, I still hear some people not realizing that. And that's why I explain it again, because you ain't never heard this. The, the, you ain't never heard this analysis. When, when y'all ever heard somebody talk about it this way? Have a good reason and a logic sound reason of what they saying in this regard with these young mobile quarterbacks. I've never heard it. I never thought this way. I only put this two and two together about two years ago. Because that era had already gotten a new deal and all of them folded. Almost all of them folded. I just started hearing it. I just started realizing it. But don't ignore it, okay? Don't ignore it. You know who's going to be the big test? Patrick Mahomes. If he don't win a Super Bowl and he go get his $40 million, mock my words. Mock my words, he's gonna be the number one catalyst for y'all to be for me to prove my point. When he get his 40 million and they can't afford an old line and this and that around him, you see all that money they spending right now? All them weapons they get around, they ain't stupid. The Chiefs know we gotta do it now. We have to do it now. If we don't do it now, we ain't gonna be able to retain none of these guys. Keep going to the AFC championship game, building a value up, but we ain't winning. Oh, they all gonna go take their money somewhere. We got to do it now so that when we do it now, some of them are going to be like, all right, I want to build this dynasty. Let me stay. Believe it or not, some of these NFL players, they want to be able to, to have a career. They want to be able to have a career like Nick, our fallen dolphin, who fell yesterday and went to heaven. Like Nick, they want to have a career like that. Playing with a team, winning Super Bowls, and you in a Hall of Famer. It's harder to become a Hall of Famer when you're bouncing around on teams in different situations because players ain't stupid. They know that when I'm in the perfect situation, if I lead to a team that give me big money, they're, they're giving me big money to suck because they're trying to excite the fan base by bringing talent in, but they're giving these bloated contracts knowing that it's not a successful model, but I'm going to go get my money, but our team's going to suck and people are going to forget who I am. Ain't no reason why a player as dominant as Indominus Sue should have been on four teams at this point in his career. No reason why a player like Indominus Sue should have been on four teams at this point in his career. He's supposed to be with a team that's winning every single year, and he's a major part of that. And he go in, and yeah, he's gonna be a Hall of Fame if you ask me. Some might even debate that. Real talk. TD, check your boy Pete Martinez. What Pete talking about? Cliff, by the end of the third quarter in the Ravens game, you will swallow those words. 300, 300, and t three TDs. Hey, Pete, I don't care if Rose is starting as long as he ain't getting that first snap. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I'm telling y'all, Rosen haters, he's going to be our future. I, I, he might be our future. He really might do. I just think that we need to take our time with him becoming our future get him closer to his next deal. Get him closer to his next deal. What if Rosen does work out to be the future, but Fitzpatrick start for two years in a row? You know what that means? All right, Rosen, it's time for you to start for this um, organization. You're up for your new co contract. We want to give you a five-year deal worth $70 million. You don't think Rosen would take it sitting on the bench behind Fitzpatrick for two years? Who just won that deal? If they know that Rosen is the guy of the future, and two years from now he on that fourth year and they got they can do his contract right then and there, five years, 70 million. Why wouldn't he taking it? Only making two million a year and being a second string. 
What other team going to play him big money if another team done sat him on the bench all that time? You just won. If he works out and we think he's the future, you just won big time. You just escaped the curse that every other team is dealing with, that rookie contract, and then it blows up. Imagine if Rosen balls out right now. Well, imagine if Rosen starts this year and next year and he goes to the Pro Bowl both years. Oh, is he not going to be a $40 million quarterback in three years? Plus Xavier Howard? Plus Mika Fitzpatrick? Plus Lar Laramie Tunsil? Plus Bobby McCain? Plus Christian Wilkins' new deal? We ain't going to be able to afford it. We going to be in a tough situation. Who are we letting go then? Now are we telling Xavier Howard in his third year, oh, uh, well, it ain't all guaranteed. Will you take a pay cut? Otherwise, we're going to have to do you like Tannehill, ship you off and give you some of your money and say bye. Do y'all not see that? I don't think this organization is any rush to start Rosen, even if they think that he's the guy. Even if they think he's the guy. Because if he is the guy and he goes out there and ball out, and I know people want to say, oh, we'll cross that road when we get there. That ain't a good gym, GM. You don't cross a road when you get there if you're a good GM. You prepare for the future if you're a good GM. Same thing with King and Drake. That's another theory of mine. Let Belage get a lot of snaps. We don't want King and Drake's value getting high. Whenever we sit down and redo his deal, if we really do believe he is the future in the pre-meal back, why are we going to let him go out there and be a pro bowler and then all of a sudden we got to give him a big contract? We can have him sharing the rock with Belage, and that's going to cut his value in half. And then we get a then we get a, a big deal that's half the price. Hey, go ahead and let him start now. Let him get all the carries he wants. Don't think that these things ain't, ain't logical things that a GM don't think about. A smart GM, at least. No, you go to your mommy. I don't know if she wants you to have that. That's what a smart GM does. What you think the Patriots do? Everything is by committee. Everything is by committee. You know how many good running backs they be having, but none of them break out like, a, oh, my gosh, because it, it, it's amazing to me. I could watch the Patriots in the AFC championship game. Somebody will run for 150 yards, and next thing you know, in the Super Bowl, they don't even get two carries. Like, really? Like, really? Man, y'all better put two and two together. Patriots ain't stupid. I ain't gonna let your value just tick up that far. No. What good does that do us? You put us in a bad situation next year. We got another guy just as capable. Let's split the runs, and then when we give you your new deal, this that's half of what it could have been if we would have started you and, and ran you down the um, – Ran you crazy. Y'all better not act like these. Th this ain't a potential logic. TD is right. Um, shout out to Greg Kania with the donation. I love you for that, man. Showing me the green on the screen. TD is right. Russell Wilson won his on his rookie deal. Since he got paid, no more um, LOB, um, no more weapons, no more Super Bowls. And it's about to get worse. Now, Russell Wilson's a special talent. That don't mean they still can't go to the playoffs a few times in this deal. But how far in the playoffs are they going to go? The only way they can overtake that is if they get seven draft picks this year and all seven of them end up starting and all seven of them are literally legit. And what are the odds of that happening? Seven, seven draft picks and all of them end up starting and all of them are almost pro bowlers? Not going to happen. Anything's possible, but y'all get my point. You get my point, man. TD, let's trade Kenny Skills because um, we got Hearns um, dumb. I don't know what the dumb is for, but we, I mean, all these wide receivers are good to have due to injuries, but we're still going to be at an um, excess. When they all come back from injury, we're at an excess. If one of them get hurt, we're still good. Even if we trade somebody and one of them get hurt, we're still good. Let me tell you why. And people disagree with me on that, but they don't give no respect to the to the fifth, sixth, and seventh wide receiver. They act like Preston Williams ain't a legitimate threat. Some would argue Preston Williams is just as good as Devontae Parker, a healthy one. He ain't the only one. It's people behind Preston Williams um, that we get that, that's talented. Isaiah Ford got talent. Is he elite? No, but you don't need elite. Anthony Mazzotto said, TDI priest patience with Josh Rosen. 
is more than just his playing and developing him patience. Y'all better start being scared of these contracts. Y'all act like this the MLB. Where you can throw whatever you want at whoever you want. You were preaching trade our wide receivers because we got Hearns. Absolutely. We have enough to trade. I said the people that um, disagree with me because of the injuries that's potential, they don't give enough respect to the fifth and sixth and seventh guy that we got at the receiver position right now. And they need to. The the eighth best, the seventh, the seventh best receiver on our roster right now can be a really good number four. So what's wrong with trading a number three or a number four and moving everybody up? We still got a good receiving core. Yeah, we can trade a receiver. If you don't have two, even more beautiful for you. You got unlimited weapons. Look how many guys got hurt last year. Grant, Wilson. I don't know. Kenny Steele's miss a game or two. You lose two receivers. You definitely want. I mean, even if we lost two receivers, y'all, let's say Albert Wilson and Jakeem Grant wasn't on this roster because they right now they tear their ACL today. Ooh, that bet not happen. But right now they out for the rest of the season. You still got Devontae Parker. You got Kenny Stills. You got Bryce Butler. You got Allen Hearns and you got Preston Williams. You still got field five reliable receivers. No, it ain't. Uh, and, and all those guys run the same speed as Jakeem Grant and Albert Wilson. Tell me I'm wrong. We got guys that run four fours. Preston Williams, four four. Bigger, taller and running the four four. You lose Jakeem Grant and Albert Wilson, and you still got Kenny Stills, Alan Hearns, Bryce Butler, Devontae Parker, and Preston Williams. So, yeah, I'm saying we can trade one, but we don't have to. That's all cool. I just think that you might want to look at that option to make the team better. What you need seven great ones for, all of them ain't going to play. You can take one of them assets and bring us a better guardian so we feel better about the whole line. That's all I'm saying. By getting rid of one of the receivers, we have the potential to actually make the roster better, not worse. Bring in a right guard for one of those guys, and we'll still be in a good position at the wide receiver spot. Fins up, baby. Fins up. Fins up, man. So I already know, I ain't going to lie, y'all. I done seen people attacking me about that. Talking about old TD, talking about old trade receiver. Look, we already had Jacqueline Grant limping off and Albert Wilson hurt. Why would we trade a receiver? Did y'all just hear what I said? Even if both of those guys was gone, do we not still have a receiving core that we feel comfortable with? And then on top of it, we talk about guys we don't even know like contact when they get in real contact against another defense, how they actually going to look out for them big time injuries. We are like they sprained their ankle and they left the last two weeks of the season. No, these are season ending major injuries. Come on, man. Uh, talent is good at skill. But you need the big, ugly old line to keep QB upright and make some holes for running backs. That's why I'm all for get rid of one of them guys and bring us in an old lineman. I would appreciate an old lineman much more than one of those receivers. I would rather another old lineman than, uh, you know, at least four or five of those receivers. Bryce Butler can go right now for a good right guard. Ain't got to be a great right guard, just a good one. A low, a low end starter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just my Alan Hearns. Either. I'm just saying, man. I agree with you, TD. But I think we should wait till the season starts till we make a trade. Oh no, no. Well, Stephen Wilson, I'm actually in agreement with that. You got to let things play out. Matter of fact, you got to let other teams get even more desperate because they're gonna want somebody. What's up, man? What's up? What you want to do? You want to come film? You want to come with me? Say hi. Hi. Say hi. Hi. Say hi. Hi. Say bye. Bye. I love you. Bye too. Love you too. <laughs> high five. Ah, oh, you missed. High five. There you go. All right, big boy. Go play with go play with your big brothers, okay? 
Okay. All right, you can hang out if you want. That's on you. All right, um, TD, are there any young offensive linemen um, that we can trade for? None on my radar right now. I mean, I can go through any team and say, hey, that guy, hey, that guy, hey, that guy. But none on my radar right now that's having any issues on their roster um, that people are like, man, that's a potential. They're having problems over there with that guy. I just don't know many. Um, you know, it's just one of them things where in this situation, Greer would be more in depth about that stuff than me. Because I'm not studying all the other teams and the relationships and the situations that their players are having or the anger they're having about money and all of this and that. I study my Dolphins and I study my opponent. And I study the league as a whole to see trends and stuff like that. That's what brings me that theory about the whole quarterback thing and stuff. Um, All right, nope. All right, you got to go now because now you're trying to take my phone. Here, take the iPad. Take the iPad, all right? Okay. It ain't charged much, but here, bye. Bye. Bye bye. That's bye. all you want anyway. Um. Seriously though, are you Kevin Hart? Or who are you talking about? <laughs> um. Available. I'll play Hearns and Butler early and often to get their trade value up. Then deal them for what we um need after a few weeks and teams needing wide receivers um pop up. Let me tell you something now. DY2, those guys got value now. With some of the injuries that's taking place in this league already, those guys have value now. You ain't even got to wait to get their value up. Hell, things might not go well and they value fall. <laughs> you got you can do it now, but we'll see if Matt Burke makes a move. You never know, man. I ain't y'all. Let me tell y'all something. I, I've been nervous the last 24 hours. I've been so nervous that my phone going to give me a pop-up and say some crazy stuff like the Miami Dolphins have traded for Ezekiel Elliott. I'm so nervous about that. I don't know why. But I just hope you got 31 other teams, and if the Cowboys actually pull a trigger and trade this man, oh, my gosh, please don't let it be us. Don't let it be us in the lottery that, that, that makes that huge mistake. Don't let it be us. I'm so nervous, y'all. I'm so nervous about that, for real. I'm, I really am. I just I just be like, oh, my gosh. Because, because, you know, if something like that happens, it's going to make me feel like same old Dolphins. We were doing so many good things in same old Dolphins. This goes totally against the foundation of what Flores and Greer have been talking about they were going to build and the patience that they were going to have. I'm just so, and, and and it would be like us, the Jets or Buffalo, who was notorious in our history of doing stuff like this. Same thing happened when we got in Dominican Sue. Man, y'all should have seen me. Y'all should have seen me. I was happy we finally brought a, a talented player in, but when I saw them numbers, oh my God, I just, I just, my, my head was hurting for eight days straight. When I saw the numbers, I was like, what are we doing? What are we doing, man? <laughs> Please, Miami, don't shock me like that. Do not shock. Hey, 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 you better watch out, John Speed. You better watch out because that's the one move that I go against all, all, all of my principles for. And yes, TD just said it. I'll break all the rules for that move. John Speed. You bring Jalen Ramsey in the building. I'll break all the rules. Back up the Brink truck. Give him two million a year more than Xavier Howard. I'll break all the rules for that one. I will break all the rules for that one. Real freaking talk. I'll break every rule. Bring Xavier, bring Ramsey in right now. I'm talking like some of y'all that act like y'all don't know football. Pay the guy. I don't care. 60 million a year, pay him now. Y'all know I'm just playing now. But I don't care. And it ain't even got nothing to do with Ramsey by himself. If we didn't have Xavier Howard and Minka Fitzpatrick, I wouldn't even be saying close to bringing Ramsey. But do y'all see? Man, you never. We, we, this NFL would have never seen a defense like this in their life. This defense would have never seen a defense like this in their life. 
And I ain't talking about just the starters on defense. I'm talking about the depth. The depth. Do you know, man, we would be running zero coverage every single game, every single snap. Every game, every snap. Send six to the quarterback every single snap. Because everybody one-on-one. Minka in the nickel. Ramsey on the outside. X on the outside. Rashad Jones. Oh, my God. Gosh, what? Imagine that. Imagine that, man. Imagine that. That would be sick. TD here is five dollars. Buy a hat or something. I don't know what that's about, old boy. Nineteen, but um, I guess it's an imaginary five dollars. I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> um, trade King and Drake for Melvin Gordon. I'm kind of off of that now because King Drake ain't going to be getting no big deal because he ain't going to get enough carries to become a premier back. It's still going to be shared. The ball's going to be shared. Every team's playbook would be 100% run, 0% pass, and they would still get eight up. With Minka in the nickel and Rashad Jones coming down in that box, I don't care if you run the ball. Kick the ball, sit on the ball, <laughs> hug the ball, throw the ball, lick the ball, deflate the ball. <laughs> it don't matter. That would be, oh, my guys! don't get me to start drooling. Man, I'm going to tell you all not, man. I got a crush on that idea, a huge one. Let me see some breaking news like that. Boy, boy, I ain't going to sleep for, 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 for three days. I'm going live three days straight. I'm going live for three days straight. You can go to sleep and wake up. You're going to see me live. Bloodshot red eyes. You're going to see me live. Three days straight, baby. And then I'm going to get eight hours sleep and go three days straight again. I'm, I'm talking about 72 dolphin type, type team. I'm talking about 72 dolphin type team. One player. One player. Can change the whole landscape. And I believe it. TD believe it. TD believe it. TD, why did we make Nito a guard? Because, man, they're trying to try any and everything. They're trying to just look at the roster they have now. Greer's giving specific instructions and Flores is following them. And he wants to do it, too. Let's see what we got on this roster first. Can we move a guy from defense to offense that can do it? Some of these guys are talented. Let's just see. Let's see what we got first. We got to be as creative as possible with what we got. And then when we exhaust all measures, then we make a, do a move. Because I, because you got to understand, Greer's like, do whatever you can, Flores, for us to keep all these draft picks for next year. Do whatever you can for us to keep as much money that we can to carry over to next year. Do whatever you can. Whatever you can. Please. And that's what they're doing. And if nothing works out from that, Greer is going to know he's done all he can. That's all I can ask. It's time for me to put some work in and help him out and give him a better personnel. That's when his job comes into play. That's when his job comes into play. They're doing everything they can, man. Everything. Everything. Let me hear it and get in a few of these tweets, guys. Um, because I'm sorry, y'all. I only got 10 minutes, honestly. All right, let me get in a few of these tweets of what happened today in camp. Uh, let's see. Let's go straight to the um game, all right? Uh, Flores praised um, Dwayne Allen today because he was back on the field, and I believe he got hurt anyway, so that was a rush. Um, all right, hold on. Let me go to the plays for the day. Kiko, Clyde Walford, and Balazs still didn't practice. Uh, uh, all right, here we go. Jakeem Grant just toasted Tony, um, Tory McTire for a TD from Rosen during one on one drills. 
it, it, listen, I'm gonna criticize everything today because I ain't like what happened in practice. You're gonna get you're gonna get harsh criticism from TD today. I'm not impressed, Jakeem Green. You played against Tory McTire and Josh Rosen in one-on-ones. Good job, but it's one-on-ones. I can't wait to start reading 11 on 11. Isaiah Ford caught a deep pass from Fitzpatrick during one-on-ones, beat Bobby McCain. That's impressive for Isaiah Ford, who is the lesser guy compared to Bobby McCain to beat him. And Fitzpatrick delivered the ball, but it was one-on-one. Shout out Isaiah Ford on that. Durval Cuervo Nuro, the Brazilian import, has been moved to guard. Yes, we just talked about that um, a little bit. Um, safety group just did a set of 10 push-ups. Not sure the reason why. Come on, safeties. Probably because um, Bobby McCain got beat. Dwayne Allen is done for the day. He did individuals and position work, even though he was walking to the um, locker room. Jakeen Grant just left the field limping on seven on sevens. All these guys with injuries looking like they're coming back up again. May not be the same thing, but still, these guys are a little timid out there. And it, 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 sometimes being timid can cause you to have even more injuries. All right. Saw Minka Fitzpatrick working as a safety for the first time. I don't think that's the first time in all of camp, but um, he's been working very minimal. I did the video on that early and I was trying to tell some people that as they said, oh, he's not mad. You're getting you're missing my point of what I meant by he was mad. He's not satisfied. And and I, I asked somebody. If you think you should be playing and then the coach 100 percent of the game and then the coach is only playing, you're better than the person he's putting out there. How do you feel? Well, he's not mad. Well, tell me, how do you feel? How do you feel if you feel like you're the best guy, but the coach is only playing you 50 percent of the time and you're capable of playing 100 percent of the time? How do you feel? Deep down inside, you're a little upset. You're not happy about that. So I thought it was a um, fair assessment. Ryan Fitzpatrick with a nice throw over the middle to Nick O'Leary, who has emerged as the starting tight end. That is true. All of that is true. Um, Fitzpatrick throwing the ball. Josh Rosen with a nice pass to Preston Williams on a slant. Good start for Rosen today. Still making late throws, but he's delivering today. I did see a video on Josh Rosen, guys. That is his biggest weakness, though. It's not his passing ability or anything. He just throws late. It's like, Hut, the, the window is developing. Right now, you're supposed to throw it, but he waits to it's developed. Uh, instead of, he, he, he got to work on his timing. That's always been his problem. I'm talking about Cardinals film. And shout out to Pete for um, sending me that film because he was, it was spot on. His biggest problem is his timing. He throws the ball late. He waits till he knows that it's there until he throws. But by the time you know that it's there, the defense is starting to recover. Versus saying it's not open yet, but it's about to be. Let me go ahead and start delivering. Oh, just like I thought. Perfect timing. And that's his problem. He has to get better at that, man. Um, but shout out to him with a nice pass to Preston Williams. Two young guys. And I like that they're developing together. That's the future, hopefully. All right, Jakeem Grant left practice holding his hamstring. We got that. Nick O'Leary just beat Cornell Armstrong for a touchdown in tandem work. Josh Rosen throws it. Big ups to Josh Rosen. Looks like he's having a much better day. Nick O'Leary continues to shine. Here we go. King and Drake with the good cutback run to the left side. Oh, I can't wait to hear his name running between the tackles. Cut back from, to, from the left side. So he went outside and cut it back. Um, Charles Harris lost the edge and um, on a Mike Jacecki block. So that's how King and Drake got outside because Charles Harris lost the edge and Mike Jacecki, um was the cause of it. Good job, Mike Jacecki opening the lane for your running back, King and, King and Drake. We need more of that from him, man. Reese Horn is working with the starters since Jakeem Grant went down. Um, see why Alan Hearns needed to be signed. That's not true. That just means you got two more guys that could be working with that group over there with the second unit practicing right now. It's just like, Reese Horn, you're available. Come on. I don't look at it that way. All right, um, let's keep it going. Xavier Howard picks off Ryan Fitzpatrick, pass intended for Preston Williams. Beautiful. Our starting quarterback picked off by our Pro Bowl All-Pro quarter. This is what you want to see out of Xavier Howard. Not picking off Rosen, not picking off Ritter, but picking off Fitzpatrick, geared towards an up-and-coming receiver in Preston Williams. I love it. Big up six Xavier Howard for that one. Andrew Van Hinkle uh, with sack on Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen been getting sacked a lot. He need to start getting rid of that ball. Raekwon McMillan with the sack of Jake Ritter. Defense lighting it up. 
Will Holden is playing left tackle after um, playing right guard yesterday. Up oh, Tunsil's replacement. They're trying to find not a replacement. Let me stop that. They're trying to find um, the guy to spare him if necessary. His backup. Who knows? Left tackle. It's crazy that you hear that. Jakeem Grant is back on the practice field. Doubt he'll work, um, though. Makes sense. Walt Aiken stops a punt at the one-yard line. That's beautiful, y'all, because let me tell you something. Flores said earlier, how do you get noticed in this league? Number one, play good on special teams. Something like stopping the ball on the one-yard is everything. The, the defense gets to play against a team that's starting on the one-yard line. That's everything when you got a Christian Wilkins blowing up the middle, um, getting tackles for losses all through camp. Oh, safeties. That's why you got to have a good special teams um, special teams unit. Good job, Walt Akins, man. Uh, sloppy day today. Too many drop passes. Don't want to hear that crap, man. Durham Smith with the nice catch from Fitzpatrick, whatever. Um, it's seven on seven with no pass rush and Josh Rosen is checking the ball down and people wonder why I have, I have say he gives me flashbacks to Chad Henney. Uh, I ain't going to say Chad Henney. Um, and I like Chad Henney when he was here, but anyway, um, Rosen just, he got a, he got a, and that's an awareness thing. You're, you're going to the check down with no pressure. You don't feel any pressure. You got to, I mean, I'm that, that don't, I wonder if a route, there was also there was another opportunity for a route to develop, but I can't judge a um a check down just because the pressure ain't there. You might have went through all your progressions and checked it down. I like that. I like that for the simple fact that he's been taking a few sacks lately. Check the ball down if you have to. That's better than taking a sack. Here we go. Fitzpatrick with a nice 20 yard out to Devontae Parker on 11 on 11s. First play of 11 on 11s. Look like Fitzpatrick getting that work again. Michael Dieter with the false with the false start. He's headed to the TNT wall. Michael Dieter looked good yesterday. I hope this ain't a starting trend for him. Jesse Davis gives up a pressure to Tyrone Holmes. Offensive line problems. Zach Sturrup is working at right guard. Another switch on the O-line. Josh Rosen with another good connection to Preston Williams. They're getting chemistry, guys. Tori McTire with the pass breakup. Defense waking up, and it's McTire. Can he be consistent? I don't believe so, but who am I to say what somebody can be? I hope he changes my mind because I'm not happy with him ever since that Chicago Bears game last year. Three freaking deep balls went his way, 60-plus yards, and all of them were converted. He was beat on the plays, just making me mad. He lucky we won that game. TJ McDonald just picked off Ryan Fitzpatrick woo, in the red zone. Worst day for Fitzpatrick or Kemp. Two interceptions. The second was a bad read. Now – if you were to compare those guys, they've had six practices. Right now, I give Fitzpatrick four, and I give Rosen two. And that's not good. If it's, Rosen is catching up, Mark Walton has talent. Um, he's small but jittery. Yes, sir. And he's getting reps because of Balazs is out. Y'all hit that like button for me um, before we get out of here. Jesse Davis struggled today at right tackle, and that's coming from the president of Jesse Davis Fan Club. O-line. Top performers from today, Dolphins practice. Number one, T.J. McDonald with an interception. Number two, Xavier Howard with an interception. Number three, tight end Nick O'Leary. Clutch into the starting – wait, clutching arms. I'm also going to give top performer of the day to Josh Rosen. Um, I like just the overall body of work that he put in today. Was it phenomenal? Not, not even close, but – Again, he's starting to have a few days that he can build from, but we haven't had a day that he could build from, and then the next day he came out and did well. Come on, Josh. Come on. It's your opportunity, kid. Tomorrow, have a good day. Have a good day tomorrow, man. I mean, Dolphin fans are crying for it all around the nation. We need you to have a good day tomorrow, man. It's 10 o'clock. I got to make sure I go um, help my wife finish out the night, guys. I wanted to take calls, but time flew by. Thank everybody for tuning in to the channel. I appreciate all your love and all your support. Everybody who supports me day in and day out. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. This is TD Fans talking on your way out of the room. Please hit that like button and share the videos. Peace, y'all. And make sure y'all check out DolphinTalk.com where you can get your latest on Dolphin News. Man, ain't nothing like a day of Dolphin Talk, baby. I'll be back to y'all tomorrow. Hopefully I get some rest tonight and I'm up early so that I can get right to it, baby. 
when tomorrow morning comes, we're gonna try to hit some streams. Well, I do got some errands to run, but you know, um, I'll probably be um live between 10 and 1 is when I'll start. But when I start, I'll be going stream after stream after stream after stream. I do research all night to see what's a good topic to educate you all on that I didn't know. I love bringing topics that I didn't know because if I didn't know and I love my team, I'm pretty sure a lot of you all didn't know either. And if you did, shout out to you for being that much of a Dolphin fan to be on top of your stuff. It's TD Fans Talk. Good stream, TD. Peace, TD. And chat. Peace, kid. All right, guys. George, hit that like button. Takes no talent. Yes, it takes no talent to hit the like button, y'all. Um, Night, Nico. Uh, damn, thanks. 1978, almost left without Lawrence, Tua, Herbert. Here y'all go. All right, guys. Love y'all, man. Peace. Your boy is out.